Right. If someone has a osteopenia or an osteoporosis that makes no sense in the clinical history of the patient, or just for thoroughness, a lot of times we will check a urine calcium, you know, either 24 hour or a calcium creatinine ratio to see is this person losing calcium in the kidney because that can be a fairly simple fix um, with the thiazide diuretics. Mm -hmm. uh, caveat there, you wanna make sure you're not losing sodium or you will actually impair bone density. Um, how does someone know that they have low bone density? Um, I guess uh, if your parents told you you're big bone, then you have good bone density. And if they didn't tell you that you're big bone, then maybe not. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, the, the main way to track this is a DEXA scan, not necessarily the same DEXA scan as we talk about getting body composition, where they get a full body T-score, a full body bone density, or they tell you your total pounds of dry bones if they dehydrated them, but uh, rather a T-score. Um, and the ones that we care about the most are in the spine and in the femoral necks and in the hips. Yeah, and those are the ones that you will get tested specifically if you are in the traditional medical setting and what if you're a woman in your 60s or if you have a family history, have been on glucocorticoids, smoking, some of these risk factors, then your doctor or your nurse practitioner might say, hey, let's check your bone density. And that will tell you very precisely where your lumbar spine compares to a healthy 30-year-old's lumbar spine, femoral neck, and so forth. You can get kind of a gauge on what your global bone density is with the DEXA scans we referenced that are at you know, DEXAFIT and many chains that perform the exact same tests that look at muscle mass, body yep. fat, bone density, and some of them include visceral fat, which is a nice metric. For that, you can go to DEXAFIT.com or DEXAScan.com slash locations. Uh, we unfortunately do not get any kickback of that. Uh, we will <laughs> we will likely have a podcast sponsor here soon, though, so more on that later. Um, but anyway, that's how to get a DEXA scan that would measure everything. But as you mentioned, the DEXA scan that's specifically looking at its spine and the hips, that's what you get when you go to your regular doctor. Yeah, and other things we think about testing, like if someone has a osteopenia or an osteoporosis that makes no sense in the clinical history of the patient, or just for thoroughness, a lot of times we will check a urine calcium, you know, either a 24 hour or a calcium creatinine ratio to see is this person losing calcium in the kidney because that can be a fairly simple fix um, with the thiazide diuretics. Mm -hmm. uh, caveat there, you wanna make sure you're not losing sodium or you will actually impair bone density. So you may be thinking, oh, we're, we're saving the calcium, but because of the interaction of the electrolytes, you definitely don't want to be giving someone hyponatremia and setting them up for other consequences of that, in addition to impairing their ability to put back on bone density. So something to think about. Seems so I, like yeah. everything is nuanced, isn't it? Yeah, there is a lot of nuance to things. It's uh, it's tricky like that. I guess I should stop my two gram of sodium a day diet while I'm on my thiazide. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, some other things to check. Uh, does this patient also have sarcopenia? Are they resistance training? What is their body composition like in general? Yes, uh, obesity, as common as it is, does have an upside and it is protective against osteopenia and osteoporosis. Yeah, you are gonna have more lean body mass if you are overweight or obese and you're gonna have more lean mass that's pushing and pulling on the bones and you're gonna be carrying around more weight, which is gonna give your body a stimulus to hold on to some of that bone. So it is an upside, but it's not our recommendation or mainstay of treatment by any means. 